Hey everyone, and welcome to another Victoria 3 mining lesson on the Iron Workshop. In this lesson, we'll learn how to create and change characters in Victoria 3. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's do a quick overview. So our first step is to create a new mod. Now, this is relevant in case you're playing around or if you're creating your new mod. If you have an existing mod, then you can just reproduce the steps that we're going to make in this lesson and put the new character into your existing mod. The next step, we will be creating our file and folder structure, copying the relevant files and folders for our new character to work. In step number three, we will be creating our character DNA using the built-in character creator. Now, in order to start this character creator, you will need to start the game in debug mode. If you don't remember how to do that, or if you don't know how to do that, I will have a link to a separate lesson on how to open debug mode in Victoria 3 in the upper right corner of the screen. In step number four, we will be creating our character entry. In step number five, we will assign our new character to an existing country. In this case, it will be Prussia. And in step number six, we will test our new character in game, make sure that everything works. All right, so with that out of the way, I will move directly to step number two, creating file and folder structure. If you don't know how to create your new mod, I have a separate lesson for that as well. So go ahead and check that out and then move on to step number two. All right, so in step number two, we will be creating our file and folder structure, basically moving files from the base game to our new mod so that things can work and be mirrored like they are in the base game. So I'm going to open two folders uh, right now. The first folder is going to be the folder of my newly created mod that I created in step number one. That one is located in Documents Paradox Interactive Victoria 3 mod. Now please make sure that you are in the local documents folder and not the OneDrive documents folder. We don't want that one. Excellent. So let's open my newly created new characters mod. And uh, on the right side here, I will open the base game, the Victoria 3 base game folder. Now, in case you don't know where that folder is located, you can find it easily by opening Steam, clicking on Victoria 3, going to properties, going to local files and clicking browse. And that will open the installation folder of Victoria 3. So as I said, let's open both of these side by side. And in here, we'll go into the game folder. And now we will start recreating some of these folders uh, in our mod. So the first folder that I want to recreate is the common folder. So let's go ahead and recreate that folder in our mod. Great. The next folder that we need is called DNA data. So let me just find that one. It is right in here, DNA data. So I will recreate that folder inside of the common folder that I created. All right, just like that. And from this folder, I'm going to grab one of these files, one of these TXT files. Okay, let's take Ab Abraham Lincoln, just for the purpose of this mod. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it inside the DNA data folder of my mod, just like that. We will be changing this name later on because we don't want to be overriding the base game Abraham Lincoln. All right, now I'm going to go back into the common folder and I'm going to do the same for Victoria 3. And the next folder that we're going to be creating here is the history folder. So if we take a look here, we should have a history folder. There it is. So I'm going to recreate it inside of my common folder. For those of you who are not new to modding, it might be weird for you that the history folder is inside of the common folder because almost in all other Paradox games, it is its own folder. But since we don't have any bookmarks in Victoria 3, and this folder rests in here. All right, so let's go into the history folder. And from the history folder, we will be creating another folder called characters. Uh, 
and let's go inside the characters folder of the base game. So this folder houses all the characters for the various countries in the game, right? So if you want a character to be a part of this country, you will need to put this character inside the file that belongs to that country. So let's go in here as well. Now I want to change the ruler of Prussia. So I will look for Prussia in this folder. You can just use the search function and type Prussia. So here we are, we have Prussia. I'm going to copy over this file and I'm going to put it in here just like that and we'll keep it as is for now. All right, so I'm going to go back into my base mod folder, the first folder of my mod. And these are all the files and folders that we need for the purpose of this lesson. We can now move to step number three, creating our character DNA. All right, so in step number three, we will be creating our character DNA, basically creating our character using the built-in character creator. Now, in order to start this creator, this character creator, you will need to have the game in debug mode, okay? It's very important, otherwise you will not have access to it. So let's start the game. Now, I do want to mention that I will not be going too in depth into this tool. We will be creating something very, very basic, very simple, just to show you how it's done and how to use this tool. You can, of course, uh, take it much further and experiment and create some awesome characters go ahead and uh, go crazy. But for the purpose of this lesson, I will try to keep it as simple as possible. So once we're in the game and we are in debug mode, I'm going to press the tilde key on my keyboard. That's the key to the left of the number one key to bring up our debug menu. And once I'm here, I'm going to type a, the following, P, E, and I'm going to press enter. And this brings up the character creation tool. Now I'm going to close the debug panel again by pressing the tilde key. And now let's take a look at this tool and what we can do with it. So uh, when we open this tool, we get this generic character. We have our male portrait. We have our female version with the DNA that we're going to be using. We're going to have our version as the character when he's a boy and when he's a girl. In here on the left, we can switch the various animations that this character is going to be using. And this is of course relevant uh, in cases where this character appears in various events that pop up on the screen. So you can see how this character will look in these various events. Next, we have the ethnicity. So obviously the game has various ethnicities that we can use. So you can play around with this toggle and give your character a different uh, ethnicity that will be a, a sort of a preset for him. You can click the randomize DNA button just to have some kind of a random character with the ethnicity that you chose. You can also click the randomize accept template that will keep the basic aspects of the character as is, but will change stuff like uh, hair cut, uh, mustache and other features uh, that the character might have. And of course, you can reset DNA to neutral, which brings you back to the default character that we had when we opened the character editor. Next, you have this age slider, so you can see how the character will look uh, in various ages. As you can see here, uh, at age zero, he looks like a baby, and as we move the slider, he gets older, and so on. You can also choose the uh, environment that will affect uh, sort of the lighting that the character will be shown in, and this is something that is also that can change in the game. Next, we have our camera, so you can change the camera angles and play around with that as well. Let's just uh, leave it as the first default option, okay? Next, uh, you have a pose, so you can choose a pose for your character, but for some reason it doesn't always work. And in here you have the gene slider, which allows you to use, uh, which allows you to change different things about the genes of this character. So for example, if I choose skin color, I can now play with these sliders in order to change the skin color of my character and really 
uh, change it to something which is very handpicked instead of the ethnicity slider that I have in here. Next, we have the slider mods. So these allow me to open the attributes for the character and just shows me all the various sliders that I can play around for this character. So this gives me a much uh, bigger overview. Next, uh, we can disable these so that the changes that we're making might only affect the male version, not the female version, only the boy or the girl. So it depends really on how much you want to get in depth in building your character. Okay, so, um, so let's just randomize this a little bit. I'm really not going to go into too much effort here to create this character, okay? Uh, since this is only supposed to show you how to use this tool, you can click the portrait of the character or you can click on 3D view in here and then it brings up the character in a much larger way. Now you can use the right mouse button in order to pan up and down. You can hold the left mouse button to rotate the character. And of course you can use the mouse wheel in order to zoom in and out on your character as well. Okay, on the right here, we also have a couple of buttons. So we can copy the DNA string. The game generates some kind of a DNA string, a unique string for this character. So we can copy that one. We can paste the DNA string. And that is something that I will get into later towards the end of the video when we talk about editing existing characters. And we can also paste the persistent DNA, which is the button that we will use to edit existing characters. A couple of other buttons allow you to reload the textures and assets in case you are editing these, in case you're changing existing textures and assets. We're not going to be doing that in this video and also allows you to reload other assets as well. So this is a very basic overview of the character builder. You really don't need to know more than that to create your basic character. And I really encourage you to go really deeper and to really try out the various buttons that you have here and options to discover more in depth about this tool. All right, so once you have your character set up, like I said, I'm only going to randomize some stuff in here. I'm not really going to try it too hard. Once you have your character, we now need to copy this character's uh, persistent DNA. Okay, so this is the the character that we want to have in the game when we want to replace an existing character. And once you do that, the persistent DNA of this character is copied over to the clipboard of your computer and you can now use it to create your character entry, which is our next step. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we are now in step number four, create character entry. So I'm going to once again go back to the character creator tool. I'm going to click on copy persistent DNA. Now I'm going to go back into my mod folder. Now in case you don't want to close the game and you just want to minimize it like I did just now, you can use the Windows key on your keyboard and the D key for desktop. And if you hold the Windows key and press D, it will allow you to just go back to the desktop like I did. All right, so let's open our mod folder. We'll go into the common folder, DNA data. So the first thing that I want to do here is to rename uh, this file because I don't want to override the existing file. So we'll just call it a new cool character. Now, obviously you should give it something a bit more informative uh, if you're creating a real character for your mod, but that's what I'm going to stick with for now. I'm going to double click the file to open it in Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++, I do have a link to the download in the description of this video. So go ahead and grab it in order to see these files like I see them here. Let's take a look at this uh, character DNA file just to figure out what's going on. So this is the DNA entry for Abraham Lincoln. Okay, and each DNA entry starts like that, DNA underscore and the name of the character. Now, I suggest that you stick to this formula or to this uh, method of naming your characters. So we will keep the DNA underscore and then we'll just call him cool new guy or something like that. Okay, 
So that's what I'm going to name my character. Next, we have the portrait info. And these are the genes uh, that create this character in the game. Now, obviously, you're not supposed to understand all of this stuff, all of these numbers. It's re it really doesn't matter. That's why we have the character creator, so that you don't have to work this stuff on your own. And now what we want to do is to basically replace the, the genes, right? We want to replace this whole section this, that starts from this opening bracket all the way to this closing bracket here. And we will keep the enabled yes because we want this character DNA to be enabled. So after copying the character entry from the game, just to see what we get, I'm going to open a new file and I'm going to paste it in here. So this is what I got from the base game. Here it tells me, okay, you need to name your character. This character is a male. This is some kind of a random generated ID that the game generated for my character. You can keep that. You can maybe not keep that. It's really up to you. But I would advise to keep it in case you want to reference your character later on in the game. This is the age for this character and these are the genes. So we are going to copy this whole section from the type all the way down to the genes, which is here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to make sure that I select this closing bracket of genes and I'm going to hold the shift key to select everything and paste. All right, now it's a very good idea to always make sure that all of your brackets are closed because if you pasted something incorrectly and this file is now broken, then your character will obviously not work in the game. To do that, just make sure that the first bracket closes properly. Now I know that this is the first bracket, so the last bracket should be the closing bracket. And if I scroll down, I see that it closes properly in here because it is highlighted in yellow or in red in case you're using a different color for Notepad++. So this file is fine, this genes entry is fine, and it can now be used in the game. We have our cool new guy created and we can use him now. So I'm going to save this file and now we're going to move to step number five, assigning our new character to a country. All right, so we've reached the final step of this lesson. We now need to assign our new cool guy to an existing country. And just because uh, we are creating this character as a test, I want to see this guy as the ruler of the nation. Now he doesn't have to be, okay? He can come up later, maybe through an event or a decision. If you want to learn how to create decisions in the game, I have a video for that as well. So we're going to make him the ruler of Prussia. So we have our new character DNA created, and now we need to tell the game that the ruler of Prussia is this cool new guy. So let's go ahead and open our mod. We'll go into the history folder. We'll go into characters. We'll open the file for Prussia. And you see here that we have a lot of characters. These are all the historical characters for Prussia. Now, I'm looking for the ruler of this country, and the way that the game determines who is going to be the ruler is by this line that says ruler, yes. So this is the ruler of the country. And what I want to do here is to create a new character, okay? I don't want to overwrite Frederick William III. So I'm just going to copy this entry and I'm going to put my new cool guy above, above Frederick William. And now let's give him a name and we'll just call him cool Prussian guy. Cool, well, cool Prussian, Prussian space marine guy. Sure, whatever. We want him to be a ruler. Now we can't have two rulers for a country. So I'm going to have to remove this line in here that says ruler yes for Frederick William III, okay. Do we want him to be a general? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. We'll just keep it as is, whatever. And his age is going to be, I don't know, something like, let's say 30. His DNA, this is the DNA that we've created previously. So I'm going to go back to my cool new guy DNA entry. I'm going to copy the name 
and I'm going to assign it in here, just like that. So the DNA for this character is DNA cool new guy. Headquarters is relevant in case your guy is also a general. And we can keep this entry as well, but we should probably remove Frederick William III from this HQ because we don't want two guys controlling the same HQ. That might obviously cause some instability. Now this is the interest group that this character is assigned to. You can find a list of all the interest groups. If, if you go into the base game, you go into common and there's a folder here called interest groups. So these are all the interest groups that characters can be assigned to. All right, so if you want him to be a part of the armed forces, that's fine. If you want him to be a part of a different interest group, you can change it as well. Next, we have ideology. So this is the ideology of this character. And of course, in common, you can also find all the ideologies that exist in the game. You can just open one of these files and change his ideology. Next, we have the traits. So this, these are the traits for this character. Now, if you want to assign a new trait to this character, you can also do that. There's a folder called character traits. And in here you can find all the traits that exist in the game. This is an effect that you can set on the character when the character is created. I'm not really going to go into that right now. And in fact, I'm going to remove it just to make things a little bit more simple. So we have our, sorry, our cool Prussian space marine guy. Very good. He is the ruler of this nation. And we can now save this file. And uh, we've finished creating our new cool character. That is it. Now let's go into the game, test this, and pray that nothing goes wrong and that we don't have to fix anything. So let's go ahead into step number six, test in game. All right, so we reached the final step in creating our new character, testing in game. Now it's very important that you remember to enable your mod through the Victoria 3 launcher before you test your new character, because as I was recording this video, I actually tried to test without doing that and my character did not show up and I was like, what the hell is going on? So please make sure to do that and let's start the game and see our new character. All right, so now if you open your new character, you will see that uh, in terms of graphic, you'll see that in terms of graphics, everything seems to be working. But our character doesn't get the name that we assigned him. If we look over here in the file, our new character should be called Cool Prussian Space Marine Guy. But in here we get some kind of a generic name that the game uh, gave the character. And this is what happens when the game can't read some kind of a localization entry, especially with names, it goes back to the list of existing names that it has and just draws a name from there. So what's going on in here? Why isn't the name working? The reason for that is because we, or I should be more specific, I forgot to add the localization for the character. If we take a look at our file here and we take a look at an existing character like William III, you'll see that the first name is Frederick underscore Wilhelm and the last name is von underscore Hohenzollern. So this underscore tells you that this is a reference to a localization entry or the text that the game reads. This is not the actual name that's being used. So we need to create this localization entry for the game to know how to read this. The game doesn't know how to read this. It doesn't read directly what you type in here. It needs to have the name inside of a localization file and then it reads it from there. All right, so let's fix our localization and get our character to fully work. To do that, we're going to do the following. I'm going to open my mod folder. I'm going to open the base game folder and I'm going to recreate in here a folder called localization. Now inside the localization folder, there are folders for each language. I'm going to be, I'll use the English folder for the purpose of this lesson. So I will recreate it inside the localization folder. And from the English folder, we just need to grab any of these files. So I'm going to grab the achievements file and I'm going to copy it over into my English folder. 
And now I'm going to change its name because I don't want to override the existing file. Now, when naming localization files, it is very important that you keep the suffix underscore L underscore English. Otherwise, your localization will not work. So I'm going to rename it to new characters. Underscore L underscore English. Now let's open this file. In here, I'm going to remove everything except for the first line. And now let's give our characters first name and last name in here. So I'm going to go back into the definition of my new character, cool new guy. And I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to call it cool new guy first name. And we want it to be cool Prussian. And I want to create another line for our last name. So our last name, and we're going to follow the same format, is going to be Space Marine Guy, just like that. All right, and now I take these entries, I take the first name and I put it in here, and I take my last name and I put it in here. And now let's save the file, and once again, let's test this thing and see if it works. All right, so now our character fully works. We have the name and we have the graphics. So our character is now working in the game. Now, before I finish this lesson, I do want to talk about how you can edit existing characters and maybe improve them. So if we start Victoria 3 and we go into our character editor, you will see that I have a button here called Paste Persistent DNA. Now, what this button allows me to do is to take any existing character and then paste it into the character editor and then change it and just repeat the process that we've done in this lesson. So let's say, for example, that I want to edit William III of Prussia and I want to locate his DNA entry. So if I take a look here, we see that his DNA is DNA King Frederick William III. So let's copy that and I'm going to open the vanilla, the base game folder. I'm going to go into game, common. Let's find the DNA folder and I'm going to open the DNA data folder. And now we will need to locate this DNA entry. Now for some characters it's easy, for others it's not. So what we can do is to use the search function of Notepad++ to search all of these files. So what I'm going to do is to double click this DNA entry. I'm going to press the control key on my keyboard and then the F key to bring up the find menu. I'm going, I'm going to go into the find in files tab and you can see that it already copied my selected text. And in the directory, I'm going to put the folder of the DNA data just by copying all of it and then clicking on find all. And then you can see that it found the entry for his DNA. So I can double click that to open it. All right, so now what I want to do is to open this character in the character editor. So what I'm going to do is copy this whole entry of portrait info all the way down to here, to this closing bracket. So we'll copy it. We'll open the character editor and we'll click the paste persistent DNA. And now it opens up this character. Now, the fact that he's a baby might be a bit weird, but that is because the editor placed the age slider all the way down. So we can just pull that. And now we can see the character as he shows up in the game. And of course, I can open all of these uh, attributes in here and start editing this character and changing his attributes and then just copy his persistent DNA, paste it, and then we have our newly edited character in the game. So that is it for creating new characters and changing existing characters in Victoria 3. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that others can learn how to create characters in the game as well. Subscribe to the channel to see more modding videos in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.